so in our microscopic world, some of the things we've been able to do are, are really quite amazing. If we look at cell research that takes place at the molecular level, here's some examples of the kinds of technology we've got available today. Over here on the left, we have an actual scanning tunneling uh, microscope rendering of, of DNA. It doesn't look like an awful lot, but add a bit of computer horsepower to this thing, and we can generate a 3D rendering of a scanning tunneling uh, microscope image of DNA. That tells us a little bit more, but we're able to take it further than that. We're actually now capable of using our computers to tell us exactly what molecules are inside uh, DNA, and we can come up with these very, very intricate and elaborate three-dimensional models, in this case of DNA, but we've also got it of many other molecules. For example, here's a, a 3D imaging done of some protein structures that we are very interested in. And you can see that the one I have on the, on the right here is, is actually animated so that we can actually study these proteins in a very, very three-dimensional sense. And, and the reason why this is important is proteins do all kinds of interesting jobs inside of our cells and inside of our bodies. And they do these jobs because they have a certain shape. It's all about the shape of these molecules that allows them to do their work. So the more we can understand about their shape and how they're put together, the more we can understand about what they do. We also have the ability now to, to do what's called gene mapping. We can actually take snippets of DNA, as you see over here on the left, in different colors. And these different colors represent different genes. And with the help of some computer power, we can start to sort these, as you see over here. We can line them up with overlapping sequences, going from the purple sequences, the yellow ones, the green ones, and the red ones. With the help of a computer, we can take these fragments that we've uh, extracted of DNA and align them all together, and we can end up getting the complete code that's on that DNA, and this may be a code for one of our genes, for example. We're also learning an awful lot more about, at the molecular level, about how cells communicate, how certain molecules, as you see over here, how certain molecules are received by the cell. See how this guy fits right inside this protein here? And that this activation then results in an entire cascade of activity between other molecules inside the cell. And, and it may ultimately result in a message being sent to our DNA that may uh, cause the DNA to activate a certain gene that we need to fulfill a certain purpose. Uh, and so this is a very exciting idea, area of science as well. We also have a way of, of tracing what's going on in our DNA by using what's called green fluorescent protein technology, or GFP. And by way of example here, if, if we just do a sequence for a, a gene of a protein, we would get something like this, but we may have a very, very hard time finding this little protein. He looks pretty big here, but to actually find this thing would be difficult. If, however, we do this, if we add some fluorescent uh, uh, atoms to some parts of the DNA, and in this case, we're adding fluorescent atoms to the stop code of a particular gene. And all we mean by fluorescent is that these are atoms that have a, a high energy state, and every now and then they release uh, some photons of light. In this case, it's green fluorescent photons. And these become very, very easy to track. So this little protein, when it forms this large compound, it actually uh, glows in the dark and, and makes it a heck of a lot easier for us to trace it or track it down. And we use this technology, to, for example, to find out what genes do you have in your body, what genes do I have in my body, and using a GFP technology as a way to pinpoint who's got what located inside their bodies.